In this video, I'll show you how we made this epic image slider in PowerPoint and how you can easily create it too. This image slider is powered by the Morph Transition, it has interactive clickable buttons, awesome look and fade and blur effects, animated titles at the top. As you can see, there are a bunch of cool things to learn, so let's go! Ok my dear friends, so let's jump into the magical world of PowerPoint and now let's go to this section tutorial that I have set up for you. So let's just hit enter to insert a new slide and we have this beautiful black slide. And here on the left we have this custom footer and the custom slide number. And I have set up these guys in the slide master view where we can customize this footer and this slide number. And by the way, on this template you can find many more creative slide layouts. And if you'd like to download all of these slides, including today's tutorial slides, for absolutely free, then all you have to do is check out my class on Skillshare. You can sign up for a one month free trial of Skillshare and download all of these slides for free. Link is in the video description. And for now, let's actually hide the footer and the slide number. And for that, we can go to insert header and footer and let's uncheck slide number and footer. And skadoosh, now we have a completely black slide. That's beautiful. And now to keep it simple, let's create an image slider with three images. And in this case, as you can see, I have these beautiful images of gaming controllers. And you might be wondering where did I find these incredible looking images. And the answer is, I've generated all of these images myself using Leonardo AI. And if you have never worked with Leonardo AI and you would like to master this incredible tool, then I would highly recommend jumping into Skillshare, the largest online learning community for creative people like you, with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity and more. And personally, I've already had some experience working with Leonardo AI, but I really wanted to sharpen my skills, and this week I stumbled upon this super duper awesome class on mastering Leonardo AI by Christian Wojtarowicz. And what I really like about this class is that the instructor thoroughly explains all of the Leonardo features and shows how to use them effectively. And I'm especially happy that I've learned how to create consistent images with different styles. And thanks to this technique, I was able to generate all of these gaming controller images for today's tutorial. And if you'd like to check out this class on Skillshare as well, then I will leave a link in the video description. The first 500 people to click the link will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare, which is super duper awesome. Skillshare is the place where you can explore your creativity and try out new things, and the summer is the perfect time to invest in yourself and dive deep into your creativity and sharpen your skills. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and let's keep on going. Ok my dear friends, let's grab one of those delicious controller images, let's copy this one and let's paste it into our slide, that's looking wonderful. And above this controller, let's insert a text box that we can use to insert the model name. And this one is called Neon, okay? And by the way, the font that I'm using is called Marino Normal, font size 60. And this font size might seem quite huge, and that's because my slide size is quite huge. As you can see, my slide dimensions are twice as big compared to the default size. And this way, I get a better resolution for all of my slides. So let me select the Neon text box and two of those smaller text boxes. And let's paste all of these three guys into our slide. And here is some extra information about these two little text boxes. For both of these guys, I have added some text fill transparency. As you can see, I'm using 80% transparency. And this is just to make these smaller text boxes less vibrant, so that all of the attention goes uh, to this central text box, in this case, Neon. That's super duper awesome. Now let me add two more controller images from my previous slides. And let's cap those images into our slide. And now let's grab the frosty and the golden controller and let's move these guys to the right and let's make them a bit smaller. Let's use 14 centimeters for the height. And now let's place this golden controller somewhere on the right edge of the slide. And let's make sure that all of these three images are nicely aligned. So let's choose middle and now all of these images are sitting on the same middle line. And next, my friends, let's add some shadows to this slide. And this way it will look like as if those controllers are coming in from the darkness. That's super duper awesome. And to create those shadows, let's use rectangles. So first let's insert a full height rectangle on the right edge of the slide. And now let's jump into the format shape options and let's add a gradient fill to this rectangle. And actually let me show you how you can create this gradient from scratch because PowerPoint just automatically applied 
the last gradient that I've used. So let's say you have something that looks like this with four color stops. We can remove these two stops in the middle. Let's select the first guy. Let's make it black. Now let's choose the correct gradient direction from left to right. Now let's select the second stop. Let's make it black as well. Let's go back to the first one and let's make it fully transparent. And Skadoosh, you have your shadow. And if you wish, you can adjust the position of your second color stop to make this shadow even more intense. So let's try using position of 90%. That's looking beautiful. And now we can just copy this rectangle. Let's make sure that we flip it horizontally and now let's attach it precisely to the left edge of the slide. And now if we would select all of these controllers and would move them to the left side, as you can see, they're coming out of the shadows and going into the shadows once again. That's a beautiful effect. And now one more awesome thing that we could do for those smaller images is add a blur effect to these guys. So let's just right click on this golden controller. Let's go to artistic effects. Let's find blur and choose any amount that you wish. I'm going with 60. And this way we'll create an illusion as if those controllers are far away in the distance. And let's apply the same blur effect to this frosty controller as well. That's super duper awesome. And next, let's create those clickable buttons that will allow us to scroll through the images. And to create those buttons, let's insert a simple circle. Hold down the shift key to draw a perfect circle. And now let's jump into the format shape options and let's do a couple of adjustments. And first of all, for the fill, let's use black. Now let's add a white outline. Let's use a line width of one point. And let's add some line transparency, for example, 75% transparency. And now let's duplicate this circle and let's make the duplicate a bit smaller. And now let's just center align both of these guys. And next, let me show you how we can fill this smaller circle with this neon controller image. And we will do that in a very specific way. So first of all, let's duplicate on this neon controller. And let's make sure that we bring this smaller circle to front so that it is above all of the images. And now let's uh, select this duplicated neon controller, hold down the shift key, select the black circle. Let's go to shape format, merge shapes and choose intersect. And skadoosh, now the image is inside of this smaller circle. And once again, let's make sure that both of these circles are center aligned. And if you'd like to adjust how the image looks like inside of this circle, you can select the circle, go to picture format, click on crop. And now you can basically drag the original image around and adjust which part of this image is going to be visible. And once you're happy, just click away to apply the changes. Okay, my friends, so since we have three beautiful controllers, let's make sure that we have three buttons as well. So let me just duplicate this button two more times so that we have three buttons in total. And we can as well turn on the slide guys so that we can better see where's the center of the slide. And now let me make two more copies and I'll catch you in a second. And next, it would be a good idea to somehow highlight the active button. So let's make sure that the outer circle is selected and let's make sure that the line is fully visible without any transparency and for the width let's use 1.5 points and now this active button stands out much better. And next we can right click on the rest of these button images, choose change picture and insert new pictures. So for the middle button let's insert a golden controller image and for the last button let's find this frosty controller image and that's super duper awesome. Okay, my dear friends, you're doing a wonderful progress. And since we have three images, it means we need to have three slides. And currently we have only a single slide. So let's insert one more slide. Let's make sure that once again, we hide the footer and the slide number so that we have a blank slide. And let's duplicate one more time so that we have three beautiful slides in total. Okay. And now we can select all of these three slides. Let's jump into the transition options and let's apply a morph transition duration two seconds and Morph Transition will do all of the animation magic. And next, let me show you how we can make all of these buttons clickable. So let's select this first button, let's go to Insert, let's look for Link, and let's choose Place in this document. And let's link this button to slide number 30, which is the first slide in our tutorial section. So let's link it to slide number 30, and let's click OK. And now let's select the second button, and we can use the shortcut key, Control k and let's link this guy to slide number 31 and let's link the last button to slide number 32. And now all of these buttons are linked to corresponding slides. And that's super duper awesome. And now let's select everything that we have on this slide and let's paste it into the next slide. And now on this slide, we'll have to select all of the controller images and move them to the left side. 
And once again, we can turn on those slide guides so that we can see where's the center of the slide. And now let's move those images one step to the left. And now let's do a few more adjustments. Let's remove the blur effect from the golden controller, just like that. And next, let's make this golden controller bigger. We can use the same dimensions as the neon controller was using. And let's just make sure that this golden controller is nicely sitting in the center of the slide. And at the same time, let's make this neon controller smaller. I'm using 14 centimeters for the height. And let's bring it down to the same middle line as the rest of the controllers. And next, let me do a few more positioning adjustments. Let's make sure that these controllers on the sides are basically sitting on the edges of each side, just like that. And of course, we'll have to add the blur effect to this neon controller as well. And next, let's make sure that we update all of the text boxes. So let's grab them all and let's move them one step to the left. And we can use the shortcut keys, Control shift c to copy the style from neon text box. And let's just hit Control v to paste it to the gold text box. And as well, let's make sure that we have some nice spacing between all of these beautiful text boxes. We can turn off the slide, guys. Okay. And at the same time, let's make sure that we update the active button. And on this slide, the active button should be the middle one the golden button and once again we can use those formatting shortcuts to quickly copy and paste the styling between the buttons and next let me select this first button picture let's go to picture format let's go to crop and let's choose fill and this way we have basically zoomed out the photo inside of that first button and let's do the opposite for the middle button so once again let's enter the crop mode and this time let's zoom in into any part of this image that we like Okay, and once we're happy, let's just click away to apply the changes. And by setting up all of these buttons in this specific way, we'll get a nice zoom effect once we click on any of these buttons. So let's check it out on the full screen and let's see what we have created so far. And let's check if everything is working as expected. So here is the first slide. Let's click on the golden button and here comes the golden controller. So the scrolling animation seems to be working fine. However, the button animation doesn't seem completely right. So let me show you how we can fix that. And first of all, let me delete all of these buttons from the second slide because on the first slide, we'll have to do a couple of adjustments and more precisely, we'll have to rename all of these outline circles in a specific way. So let's select the first outline circle and let's give it a name, double exclamation marks, ring one. For the second guy, let's call it double exclamation marks ring 2 and for the last one double exclamation marks ring 3. And using exclamation marks in the names of your objects should help solve all of the morph animation issues. And now let me copy all of those buttons from the first slide, let's paste them into the second slide and now let's just update the active button. And now let's check it out on the full screen once again and as you can see the button animation is working fine, that's nice. The controllers are scrolling and the text at the top is scrolling as well. So everything is working as expected. And next, let's copy everything from the second slide and let's paste it into slide number three. Well, in this case, it is slide number 32. And once again, let's scroll these controllers to the left side by one step. So let me do all of the necessary adjustments and I'll catch you in a second. Okay, my dear friends, so everything seems to be ready and let's check it out on the full screen. Let's click on the golden button and skadoosh, here comes the golden controller and here comes the frosty controller and we can jump back directly to the first controller, that's nice, we can come back to the last one if we wish, that's super duper awesome, that's the power of the morph transition and the hyperlinks. And here is my original presentation where we have a few more models of these AI generated controllers. And once again, if you'd like to learn how you could generate images like this, then definitely check out the Leonardo AI class on Skillshare. Link is in the video description. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. Stay happy, stay healthy, keep on creating, and I'll see you on my next video. Peace.